Did you know the best seeds for your garden don't come from the nursery? In fact, the seeds that will create the most robust and delicious fruits and vegetables come directly from your garden. This is because they are uniquely adapted to your growing conditions, better than anything you can buy from a fancy catalog or website. Through the magic of seed saving, it is quite possible to have the garden of your dreams. The best part is, saving your own seeds is surprisingly easy and fun. With a bit of instruction, anyone can become a seed saving superstar. Let us teach you how in our free seed saving webinar. Just text SEEDS to 33444 to sign up or visit SeedSavingHacked.org for more information. That's SEEDS to 33444 or visit SeedSavingHacked.org. You're listening to the Urban Farm Podcast, your partner in the Grow Your Own Food revolution. Whether you've just been introduced to urban farming or you're a lifelong advocate, we're sure you'll leave feeling more informed, equipped, and empowered to dig deeper into the soil of your local food economy. With you every step of the way, here's your host, Greg Peterson. Today on the Urban Farm Podcast, we have Jennifer Osuch of Self Reliant School to talk about growing, cooking, and preserving your own food. Jennifer is the author of the Preparedness Planner series, lead teacher at the online Self Reliant School, which is dedicated to teaching preparedness and self reliant skills, host of the weekly live Self Reliant Living Show, which I was a guest on in November 2016, and a homeschooling mom. She is dedicated to teaching back to basics food preparation and pres preserving skills to help people eat healthy, save money, live greener, and be prepared for anything. Jennifer and her husband turned to the old school basics when they found themselves in, the, in mountains of debt, two of their three boys suffering from asthma and allergies, and she herself struggling from years of her own weight management. She knows from experience that eating real food when you're watching every penny is not easy, and trying to put healthy food into storage is almost impossible. Jennifer, her husband, and three teenage boys live in Texas. She is on a mission to save the knowledge and wisdom of our grandparents and to help people apply it to their lives today. Welcome to the show today, Jennifer. Hi, Greg. It's so great to be here. Well, I am so glad to be with you again. So... I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks for us and share more about the path you took to get where you're at now? Sure. Our path has, you know, started just like you were saying in the introduction, you know, we were kind of in debt and I was struggling with our kids uh, and their asthma. And the thing is that I wasn't really, uh, I guess, a just a mild case of asthma like you might think of. I My brother suffered from it when he was younger, so I, I sort of had a little bit of knowledge about it. But the thing is that both, two of my children suffered for, uh, from it, plus hmm. the doctor for my youngest child had taken me aside and said, you know, this is what you need to look out for in the middle of the night. You know, he could Ooh. stop breathing. And so it was, it, it, that's really kind of when it hit home that, Holy well, my goodness, there is something wrong here. Yeah. Well, and, and, eh. and as a mom hearing that, that must've just freaked you out. It did. I went oh, out so and sorry. I bought, you know, a stethoscope so I could listen to him breathe. And I learned how to use that. And I set up nights and, and just, you know, listen to him breathe naturally. And then with the stethoscope and mm -hmm. just, made sure that he was okay. And, you know, being very tired <laughs> and very worn out after that, I, I started exploring different ways that it could have happened, you know, because mm -hmm. I was sort of in just kind of disbelief that how did I get here? Right. And then the idea of having to give your child steroids, because that's you know, that's a really common thing that they give in the inhalers is steroids. Wow. And so that really kind of opened my eyes to like, okay, well, 
like I said, how did we get here and why? You know, what, I don't understand it. And then why is one child affected and then not another? And, you know, all of these questions going through my head. And so I started doing a lot of research and I came to an understanding that food is, you know, it, it really is what makes us tick, right? In right. all aspects, in yeah. your your health, in your mental health, you know, your overall health, your um, your respiratory health, all parts. All you know, there it, yeah. are there are factors that come in and in and out. You know, if you live in a polluted environment, you know, that's not going to help you. But you know, it starts from within. It starts where that, you know, it, when you your body takes in the food, it starts the process of nourishing your body. And that is something that I had not considered fully at mm-hmm. that time. So that's kind of where everything started for me in terms of looking at you know, how food affects your Mm -hmm. body and how I could do things that were not giving my child steroids to to try and correct or even manage. Because at that point, I just sort of accepted that they had this and I wasn't even looking for a cure. I was just looking for manage at that point. And then as time went by and we corrected a lot of things in our diet, I saw the power of food and what it was doing to them in terms of when I gave them certain foods, they would react. And when I took away certain foods, how much better things Uh were. And so that is kind of, you know, like I said, that's the catalyst of how I got really, really interested in this topic, the subject, right? And then, um, you know, the sustainability aspect comes into it because I'm a mother and, you know, want to leave right. the earth better than when I found it for my children. I mm-hmm. want them to have a place that's that's nice to live, right? Right. Oh, yeah. So here we are. <laughs> well, that was one hell of a wake up call. Yes. About food. What what kinds of things did you do to adjust the their food intake or what you created for them that made the biggest difference? Well, I tell you, at the time, taking away dairy was, a, it made a big difference Interesting. Um, with mucus because they had asthma and it wasn't the type of asthma that you think of, you know, oh, I can't breathe type of um, asthma. It was more of a cough and it was more, mm. that's how it presented, in other words. And so that was another thing that, you know, I had to learn because I had not had any sort of background with this. I mean, and so... You know, this started my path in terms of, okay, let me take away dairy and then let me see about sugar and processed foods. You know, it made me look and stop and read the ingredients on different (laughs) things that I was buying because that, you know, that's uh, that's a big part, I think, of the problem is is the ingredients that, you know, you can't pronounce and the sugar levels in food that where it doesn't need to be. I could go on and on, but that's really one of the first things that I did was I removed dairy to see how they would react. And then when I, you know, as I progressed, you know, they're back on dairy now. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that as we progressed, I saw, like I said, the processed food and because we would go to McDonald's for lunch, you know, that that was a normal thing. Right. Right. It was. And so, like I said, it started the it just started my education trial by fire baby exactly yeah. right and so you know here we are and we have gone through a lot of diet changes and some have worked and some have not and so you know that's basically like i said yeah where i started and and you're right it was a wake-up call yeah so well and i and i share this with people all the time it's whatever food plan i'm not even going to call it a diet whatever food plan you're on You have to figure out what works for you uh, and make the, you know, kind of fold that into your life. Because, you know, if I'm a vegan and I tell you, you have to be a vegan and it doesn't work for you, it's a self-discovery that you're going to have to do. Exactly right. Yeah. 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 And, And to speak to that, 
we did try that road in terms of being vegetarian uh -huh. and, and vegan. And I think that what happened was that that sort of cleared up the processed food because it's, it's harder to oh. be a vegetarian and a vegan when you're eating all this processed food, right? So yeah. it, it didn't take it all away, but a, a large part. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And we did go through that. We We went, like I said, totally to the point of being vegan, mm -hmm. which as most people know is is uh, eating just a plant-based plant -based diet, diet. Without, yeah. without any um, animal products. But we have come full circle in the sense that I, we have added some of those back because I wasn't feeling well. Right. And so I have added some of those back, but we are much more educated in terms of how the dairy and the, all the meats are processed and how they're raised. So we are, we are much better than we were when, you know, before we started researching and understanding how diet really affects your health. <laughs> Amen to that. So homesteader, self-reliant, these are words that you use on your website. Are you a homesteader? Well, I don't know if you would think of us as a homesteader in the sense that we have a large plot of land mm -hmm. and we have a farmhouse and all of that. And we, you know, we're not homesteaders in that sense. We actually live in a suburban area, mm. but we are very much committed to sustainability and we garden. We try to, uh, buy food locally when you know because we don't raise everything we don't have animals we do have a vegetable garden and an herb garden and all of that so we do try to raise some of the the produce that we eat but being in a suburban area we don't have a cattle or goats or chickens right. or any of that you know so we do try to buy those things locally and i feel like that you know that's part of being a homesteader is to be sustainable in your community. Yeah. So in that sense, we are, but not in the traditional farmhouse type of large plot of land. Yeah. Maybe someday we're just not in, in that, I guess, phase of, of life right now. Great. So speak to me about this being self-reliant and goals you might have around that. Well, when I talk about self-reliance, I really mean sustainability. And I don't know, you know, Self-reliance implies being selfish and being, you know, being about you and doing it all yourself. And, and that's not really what we're about. Mm -hmm. We're about contributing to a self-reliant, sustainable community. Mm -hmm. And so that is what we are trying to teach. That is what we advocate because you're, you know, I guess there are some people who are happy going out in the woods and building a little shack and never hearing from anybody <laughs> or talking to anybody that that's not what, you know, most yeah. people need because we are social beings or social creatures. And so self-reliant in the sense that you can sustain a community and that, so that's, that's really what we mean. And that's, like I said, what we teach and advocate. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your school. Well, we have classes in gardening. So mm -hmm. we have a hydroponics class. We have uh, classes in cooking. And so we have a pressure cooking class. Oh, we nice. have a home brewing class. Oh, I'm all about that. We have a bread making class. And all of these are things that are old traditions that you know people just don't do anymore. We do preserving, we do dehydrating, canning. I think canning kind of goes in and out of vogue, whatever you want to say. I think it came back for a little while in terms of being our craft and making jam. But in terms right. of putting up food for your family, you know, you don't hear of people doing that anymore. Right. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, it's not a hard thing to do, but there are some rules that you have to follow and that sort of thing. And a lot of people are scared to do it because they have never done it and never been around anyone who has done it. And so we're just sort of taking that fear out of of the equation and making it simple and easy for people to do this. Gotta love that. So, <laughs> so I'm on your website, uh, right this moment I'm on your website and the Self-Reliant video series. Uh, so people can go to selfreliantschool.com on the front page, click here to access free videos. Tell me about the Self-Reliant video series. 
Oh, yeah. So that is just kind of a sample of what we have in our membership. Mm -hmm. And so there is a class on dehydrating in there. There's a canning class. And then I think Bill has a soda class in there from our home brewing e-course. So you can go and sort of, you know, sample some of the things that we offer. And, you know, it's always nice to be able to to look and see how somebody teaches. Not everybody relates to everybody. And if you like the style of teaching and all of that, mm-hmm. then, you know, we completely welcome you into our membership. And then, you know, you can have the, the complete e-course. And it's it's an all-in-one type of thing. It's not, we don't sell the courses individually. You just come on oh, in. Nice. And it's, we believe it's a lifestyle. So, yeah. you know, and, and not everybody is interested in doing every single thing say when you can you know there's some people who don't really care for jam or whatever but there's you know classes maybe on pickles or something that you would be interested in so um so that's just kind of how that works but yeah so excellent and this is this is all online this is all online this is available anytime 24 7 yeah (laughs) what's your favorite class that you teach Oh my goodness. I think the favorite, my favorite class that I teach is the one I'm teaching, you know, that day (laughs) (laughs) because I just, I just love, I just love all of it. I really do. And the thing is that, um, we have a Facebook group for our members Uh and the things that they talk about and they want to know are some of the things that you know, I go and explore and am able to take back to them. And, you know, we're able to talk about it. And it's just, it's such a fun group. And it's, it's a fun time, you know, and they teach me things and we talk about things. And it's just a wonderful community to be in. And so I, I love that part of this because the thing is that you know when because I've been a teacher all of my life I was a teacher before I did this so the thing I thought when I first decided to do this online I thought well gosh this is going to be like a really cold type of delivery (laughs) right I'm not going to be able to interact with Uh the people that I'm trying to teach but you know come to find out that's really really not true because we are able to talk with people through our group and through email and it's just wonderful relationships that have sprung out up and I just you know like I said that's my favorite part of it anyway <laughs> nice you know I I tell people this all the time on a really really good day in fact I'm going to give a lecture at a library tonight and if I'm really lucky there'll be 20 25 people there and <laughs> you know I interact with them on a really good night on our in our online classes because we do online classes as well we'll get four or five hundred people in the classroom and we're interacting with them at you know not quite the same level but there's definitely interaction and questions so I, I I hear you on that it is so much fun to be able to reach across really the world you know be able to share with people what's your thoughts on that it's amazing it just never gets old because we have um, members from Australia mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. so that is just that blows my mind every time I think about it I mean I'm I'm old enough without like giving my age away or whatever but I'm old enough to remember when that was really not possible right and, exactly <laughs> you know it was possible to write a letter and maybe to have a quick phone call uh-huh. and that, that was it you know right. other than that it would cost a lot of money to do whatever else and so yeah that we can do this on a small scale is just completely amazing and like I said it just never gets old I just I just love it every day and you know like I said I learn I learn things that they do in Australia that you know right. I didn't know about <laughs> right. you know and that's one of the cool things for me on my show and, and we're going to talk about your show here in a moment uh, but I you know the last guest I had on I just learned so much from her just by you know chatting like this so it's like we always have to be prepared to learn as well in you know in getting prepared I, mean, I think i think exercising the here's how you learn muscle is really important oh yeah because you i mean i've learned so much in so many different aspects of of just being a human i mean i i, right. I learn more about what I'm teaching, which I love. I mean, that's just because that fuels me. I love this stuff anyway. So I I love that. 
I I have learned how to talk to people. I've learned that, you know, it's okay to relate to people in different ways and that, you know, everybody wants to be part of a community and that we can provide that. It's just, it, like I said, it just never gets old. It's just amazing to me. And, and that's my favorite part is actually speaking and talking to different people. It's just, it's just a joy. Cool, 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 cool. So tell me about your self-reliant living show because you've got a weekly show that you do. I was a guest in November on your show. Tell me about that and where people can find out more about that because we had fun in our conversation. We did, and you even took us outside and to show us some of your um, oh, plants yes. and the things yeah, that you were growing. Uh -huh. That was most awesome. Yes, we have a live show that is live on Facebook every Thursday at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. And so, yeah, I just have guests, wonderful guests like yourself. And I have learned so much from them. They have just, you know, given of themselves and they talk about their lives and mm -hmm. what they deal with and how they how they do different things. And it's like I said, it's wonderful to 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 learn that way. And then also we do some uh, demonstrations. So I know I was cooking um, in our pressure cooker, I cooked really quick mac and cheese, and that was fun. So it's, uh -huh. it was fun to do a demo and do it right there live where people could actually see. And then I have had my son on, and it's really oh, fun nice. because I'm standing right there, yeah, with the guest. And the thing is that we can actually do two cameras. So we can do like a a shot that shows both of us. And then he, on his show, what he was doing was showing people how to tie a uh, paracord and to show how that was useful and everything. So we had wow. a second camera that was closer and then people could really see that. And it was just live in real time and people can comment and participate. And, you know, we answer their questions right there and then. And, you know, it's just, it's really a special thing to be able to mm -hmm. connect with people that way. Nice. So was is there a guest that really inspired you? Oh, goodness. There have been a few. There have been a few that have really inspired me. We had um, Lisa Bedford, the survival mom, oh. on our show. Yeah, and she's like a celebrity. I mean, she's, uh -huh. you know. At, That's at always cool. In, in my mind and my yeah. heart. Well, she, she is because she did actually the trailer for World War Z. Right, she's on the DVD of oh. that, so she she really is. I mean, let's see, you know. Um, but anyway, she is just a wonderful person, and we are friends, and I value that friendship, and I just yeah. loved her being on. It just, um, you know, it was just one of those things that was really special, and she has such good information. And let's see, I've had uh, Missy Marsh on a couple of times, and she is another person who's really into preparedness and helping people mm -hmm. do it step by step. And the thing is, I don't know if you saw, I don't know when this is going to go live for you, but there has been a viral video going around about a person who was on the BBC. He was doing an interview uh -huh. and it was a very serious interview. And then um, his children came in and then his wife came in and, and quickly gathered the children and, and, and made an exit, you know, really quickly. Uh -huh. And so this, this has been going around. And like I said, if you're listening to the replay of this, then I may have to jog your memory a little bit. But if it's... It's pretty recent now. So if you're listening, um, you know, right when it's released, then you'll probably remember this. In any case, there was a bunch of, of things that people were saying about this video and, you know, how he handled it and, and did, should have done this and should have done that. Well, Misty had the same thing happen to her when she was on my show and her children came in and were part of the show for a minute. And uh -huh. it was just the way she handled it was wonderful. So that came up actually in our our group that you know our member group right and you know I I had to make a comment and I, I said well here is how real professional handles that and we you know linked to her show and so that was really memorable and it just 
you know, it just goes to show that these are real people with real lives and, you know, how they handle these situations, which she handled it beautifully. I have to say better than this, the guy that was going around on, oh. on Facebook. And just um, like I said, that I'm able to talk to these people and they let me in just for a little bit to see a glimpse of their life and to speak with me about these important topics. It just, you know, warms my heart and it is one of my favorite things that I do. Yeah. Wow. How cool. How cool. How cool. So what three things can someone do to begin being self-reliant right now? Right now. Well, I think that one of the biggest things is to make a plan and you have to to do what you can with what you have. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people will tell you, well, you need to go and buy land and you need to have a garden and you need to, you know, you need to, you need to, you need to, you know, there's all kinds of advice everywhere. But I think just taking stock of what you have and making a plan and not, you know, going out and buying anything or not making plans to really do anything new at the moment, but just going ahead, like I said, taking stock and then making a plan and then executing it instead of, you know, knee jerk reaction in terms of like, oh, well, I need to can. So I'm going to go buy a canner. I think that, you know, the best thing you can do is to make a plan after you've taken stock of what you've had, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think I sort of rambled there for a minute, but yeah. that's good. So step one is make a plan. What might that plan look like? Well, I think, like I said, after you've taken stock of what you have and to see what you can do in your life to live more sustainably. And if that's, I don't know, maybe um, trying to live without plastic bags for a week or if that's taking a visit to the farmer's market. There's a lot of people who don't even know that there's a farmer's market Close in by. their community. Yeah. yeah, in their community. Maybe that means for you that you'll seek out a farmer or a rancher to buy your, your meat from. Maybe that means just checking into the different laws in your community. Maybe you can have chickens and you weren't aware of it. So just just checking things out First, you know, with your plan, right? You've got a plan right. and then trying to figure out these small steps that you can do to be more sustainable, live more sustainably and contribute. That would be the, the last one, right? Number three and contribute to your community because I feel like that, you know, you can't be sustainable or even self-reliant. We just talked about this, right? Unless you're the man that goes out and or man or woman that goes up into the mountain and lives by themselves. You have to have a community. Yeah. Building community is, in one of, in my opinion, one of the most important things that you can do. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to shift on you, and I'd like for you to talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that fairy, and what you might have learned from it. There are so many to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're a good, if you're a great gardener, that is absolutely the case. <laughs> Um, well, let's talk about going back to being a vegetarian mm -hmm. because at that point when we had pivoted and we had uh, made the decision to be vegetarian and then become vegan, you know, we were really living that lifestyle um, in terms of of advocating for animals and all of that stuff. So when we not to say that if you're not vegetarian or vegan that you don't advocate for animals. That's right. not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that we had um, been influenced by a lot of people that live a lifestyle where, you know, they don't want any harm to come to animals and that sort of thing. So the thing is, when I realized that I wasn't feeling good and I knew it was the food that I wasn't eating that was the problem, you know, I wasn't getting the fats that I needed and right. the, the nutrition that I needed – um, so when I had to pivot there, I think I felt like a failure in terms uh, of what I, was I going to tell my kids? You know, how were yeah. they going to make this change with me? So that took, you know, that took some sinking in that, you know, oh gosh, what have I done? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and and so that that took a little while to to not only you know, pivot, but to process and for my family to process because I was the one leading them down this path. And so that was very interesting just to, to see it play out. But at that 
point when I knew that this wasn't the best thing for me anymore. And that was another thing because it was me and my body that was saying, well, this isn't what you need. And so how we pivoted from that. And so I, but at that time that I knew that there had to be a change, I think I did feel like, okay, what have I done? This is a failure. (laughs) So, And was it a failure? No, it wasn't. No, because we, we talked about it and we, we made changes and they were slow and we talked about the way that farmers care for their animals. Mm -hmm. We talked about God's design and we, I was never, you know, as long as animals were ethically treated, we were never to the point where we would go out and march against processing animals or anything like that. We weren't, yeah. we weren't that far gone. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the same time, like I said, my kids had, had been impressionable and they were really glad, you know, that, that we didn't eat meat we didn't eat cows we didn't eat chicken that sort of thing Mm -hmm. and so when we started introducing some of that stuff back in then it was a real that was a conversation uh, to have yeah real catalyst for conversation exactly right and so but yeah i did like i said at that point when i knew there had to be a change it was it felt very much like i had failed but then you know it, it was just one of those things where you have to pick yourself up and march on and you know, uh, bring your children along for the journey. Cause at that right. point, that's how I felt. I wasn't even teaching them anymore. I was like, well, let's just see what happens. Yeah. Beautiful. What do you consider your biggest success? I think my biggest success is, is my children. I mean, I just, you know, they're being raised in an environment where they're homeschooled. So that to me is a, a success. My, my young, I mean, they're not done yet, right? They're right. not. We haven't taken them out of the <laughs> uh, out of the house or anything. It's not. It's not like it's a done process. I don't think it's ever a done process. Even yeah, exactly. When at, 50, at fifty-six, I can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that my sixteen-year-old is in his second semester of college, and at sixteen, wow. yeah. And so, um. So I think that is is one of my biggest yeah. successes because I wasn't sure. My husband wasn't. I mean, I guess I was more sure than my husband. Let's put mm-hmm. it like that. But I, you know, you, you're never sure as a mother, right? You're always yeah. second guessing yourself. And I had taught in the public school before. And so I, I knew what went on and I knew that I didn't want that for my children. And so... Yeah, and it was it was kind of a tough road there because I did, there wasn't agreement from everybody in the family and all of that sort of thing. But um, that I feel like is is my greatest success yeah. because they are they're happy happy Ye- boys. Yay! <laughs> so and this probably then ties into my next question, which is what drives you? Yeah, <laughs> my children, <laughs> yeah. my children completely. They surprise me. They entertain me. They teach me. They are just, they are spectacular. Their sense of humor is just, it's just wonderful. It's just, they're a joy to be around. And I'm so grateful every day that I have them. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So I am all about education. And I have to know, is there a book that's been influential in this process in your life? Yeah, I could just say uh, the Bible, I think, has been because, you know, we're Christian and mm-hmm. I raised my children Christian. You know, we do the best that we can and we are very, I don't know, we're very history oriented. So that's another aspect of it that is fun to study and to yeah. you know just kind of explore and talk about different situations that existed uh, before this sort of commercial society, it all ties in, right, with the food oh, and the yeah. commercialism and all yep. of that. So it's just kind of fun to talk about way back when and what people uh, were challenged with and mm-hmm. and God's design. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. So what one final piece of advice do you have for our listeners? Well, I think I think the thing that is kind of my motto is just to keep going because, you know, if you're just stuck in one place, you're not making any progress one way or the other. You're not really going backwards or forward, you know, just just to keep in motion Mm -hmm. and to keep searching for the answers, right? If there's something that you're curious about or you're upset about or that you just would like to know, yeah, just keep searching for the answers and keep moving. Yeah, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show and sharing your experience with us today, Jennifer. It has been a treat to chat with you. 
Thank you, Greg. So how can our listeners get a hold of you? Well, they can go to selfrelianceschool.com and um, you can look there, like you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. There's some free videos that we would love to share with you. And we have a ton of content there that has to do with cooking, preserving, growing your own food. Nice, nice. Now, these are online classes that you offer. Similar to Urban Farm U, we offer online classes. And I am a big, big, big proponent of get out and learn. You know, so take a class from Jennifer or take a class from Greg, but get out there and really learn how to do some of this stuff for yourself. What do you think about that? I love that. I think that is really great advice. And yeah, just keep learning because, you know, you never know what you're going to discover about the world, about yourself. Perfect. You can find show notes from today's podcast at urbanfarm.org forward slash self-reliant. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us on the Urban Farm Podcast. Did you know the best seeds for your garden don't come from the nursery? In fact, the seeds that will create the most robust and delicious fruits and vegetables come directly from your garden. This is because they are uniquely adapted to your growing conditions, better than anything you can buy from a fancy catalog or website. Through the magic of seed saving, it is quite possible to have the garden of your dreams. The best part is, saving your own seeds is surprisingly easy and fun. With a bit of instruction, anyone can become a seed saving superstar. Let us teach you how in our free seed saving webinar. Just text SEEDS to 33444 to sign up or visit Seed Saving Hacked org for more information. That's seeds to 33444 or visit seedsavinghacked.org. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen three days a week for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.